All right, Dan Riskin is standing by. He is CTV science and technology expert. Dan, what do you think? Oh, listen, Chris Hadfield knows he's been there. He's done it. Uh, but all I can say is that the technology just keeps improving, and that makes this like just keep coming closer to a day when all of us could have that Chris Hadfield experience. I mean, what we're ultimately working toward is a world in which we can go to space on vacation. And this is a private company. And yes, the ticket was quite expensive, as you say, but uh, that this is somebody who decided to spend their money on a trip to space, and they got to do that. And they got to go up in this cool new spacesuit uh, with an opening and closing front sort of helmet piece that looks like it's something straight out of Star Trek. And uh, it's just a really fun, exciting day to feel like we're moving into the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what the sort of takeaway is in terms of, you know, first of all, those spacesuits are really cool, uh, and yeah. they're much less bulky than the, you know, the NASA ones we're used to seeing. Uh, what does this mean, though? You know, because sometimes people will say, oh, you know, some tech billionaire blowing hundreds of millions of dollars of their own money on some kind of vanity project. But there is real science here, uh, and you know, being able to use those suits is a big test. And also seeing, you know, SpaceX and NASA working together to try to make this happen. Yeah, I mean, both things can be true. Yeah, it is a vanity project for a billionaire. It's it's a it's a really expensive hobby, and I mean, the person who paid for it got to be the one who stuck his head out of the capsule first. So yes, all those things are really happening. And if you're the type of person that likes to focus on the negatives, there's plenty there for you. Enjoy, have a great time. I choose to look at the other side of that coin, which is that all the technologies that make it possible for that billionaire to do what they're doing, well, that employs tens of thousands of people who work for SpaceX and work for related companies that are making these technologies a reality. And those technologies are evolving in a really exciting way. I mean, one of the things that happened today is that four people at the same time were exposed to the nothingness of space because there's no airlock on that thing. So they opened the door, space came in, all the air went out. And so it didn't matter if you were sticking your head out or not, you were still totally vulnerable and relied on that spacesuit to keep you alive. And so four people tested those spacesuits for the first time in space at the same time with no one, you know, safely behind a closed door sort of watching things and in control. They were all sort of just sitting ducks making that happen. So that's part of the reason that it was a little bit muted in terms of the things that they tried to do. It's not that exciting to see someone stand at the top of the stairwell and wave their arm a little bit. You'd rather see them out floating around doing flips. And that'll come. But right now, technologically, what they've accomplished really is a huge milestone. And it's exciting for all of us. It kind of normalizes it even more, doesn't it? For, you know, a human travel up into space without having to yeah. necessarily be a NASA astronaut, Dan. Yeah, and having that camera mounted into the helmet so that as Jared Isaacman made that emergence this morning just before 7 a.m. Eastern time, we all got to see it at the same time as he did. I mean, we all saw it at the same time as he did. That is really neat. And that is a big part of how space exploration works now. Even the robotic stuff landing on Mars, even though people aren't going that far yet, because of cameras and because of the technology, we can have a sense that we're there instead of relying on one or two grainy images that make their way back. And so uh, in a way, we're all getting to experience this rush, this this transformation to becoming a space species. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, just think about how hard it was just to open the door and stick your head out for a second and go back in. I mean, ultimately, that's all that was really accomplished. And so much technology and preparation and time and danger went into making that happen. So it's small steps, but we're going in the right direction. Space species. I like that, Dan. Thanks so much for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Dan Riskin, our science and tech correspondent here at CTV News.